This is your glute strength circuit um, for weeks two through six of your program. So we have um, six different exercises and we're gonna go through them pretty quickly. So if you have questions or not sure about form or what you should be doing, uh, make sure to check out the individual video links. So um, where I break it down more and give you more tips and advice as you go through the exercise. So just to, before we get started, I have a towel roll, you'll need this. Um, a loop band, not absolutely necessary, but I do use this. Um, something sturdy to hold on to. I'm gonna hold on to this. I prefer you have a um, countertop um, kind of at your kitchen sink or a banister or a pole, something sturdy to hold on to. And I have a broom that is for one of the exercises. So a broom, a cane, a uh, baseball bat, something you have at home works just fine. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to Place this just underneath your low back, lie down onto your side, and then roll back onto your back. One leg straight, you're reaching long with that leg. Grab your other leg here, you're getting a stretch to the hip flexor as you squeeze the glute. You can do about 10 each side here. So you're just tightening your glute. We're doing uh, glute activation here, finding that glute. A lot of times our glutes shut off during pregnancy and postpartum, so we wanna make sure we get them back on board. So do about 10 glute squeezes. You've got this towel under your low back so you get a little bit of a stretch through the front. And we're strengthening that backside, tightening that glute. Okay, make sure you feel that glute activate. Hold for a couple seconds and release. Reaching long through that leg, through your heel, help you activate and isolate that glute muscle. And then go ahead and switch sides. Other leg comes towards your chest. Reach long through this leg, tighten the glute. Squeeze, connect with that glute. Squeeze and hold. Just be aware, are you having trouble activating on one side more than the other? Um, if you're having symptoms such as back pain, hip pain, pelvic pain, that could potentially play a role. So learning to activate your glutes can be really helpful for those things and strengthening them. And once you get about 10 here on this side, that is good. So next, I am gonna grab my band. This you can do without the band as well, but I'm gonna bring the band, if you have one, bring it above your knees, and then we're gonna lie down onto one side. Here, you are keeping your trunks, uh, trunk and hips neutral here. Bring this top leg up, and then we're rotating into internal and external rotation here. Not letting our knee drop down. Okay, so no, none of this, but keep it elevated. Working all the hip muscles here. Holding this hip and hip abduction. Working through internal and external rotation to work the hip rotators. You wanna do about 10 to 12 reps, nice and slow on this side. And again, not letting that knee drop down. Feel this kind of in that outer hip and really feel that ball in the socket, your hip joint gliding and rolling as you move through that rotation. Okay, so again, you can do this without a band. We're gonna go ahead and switch sides. Do the same thing on the other side. So again, remember trunk and hips neutral. I don't want your legs up here. You're holding here and rotating through. Don't let your body roll back either. Keep everything in line. Keep the core engaged. Let all that motion come from the hip joint. Really working through that rotation here. Do a few more here. Take that band off if you're using one, and we're going to roll onto our stomach here. If you've had a C-section or just feel uncomfortable lying on your stomach, I'm going to real quick show you what you're going to be doing. So if you can't lie on your stomach, you're going to come up to hands and knees, and you're going to be sliding one leg and hip behind you on your exhale as you squeeze that glute. Okay, so don't lift the leg, just squeeze the glute as you slide that hip back. If you're comfortable lying on your stomach, you're going to come on down. We're going to do, be doing hip extension. So give me a good glute squeeze first on one side, then lift the leg. Okay, you can alternate sides, isolate the glute, activate, and lift. 
As you lift the leg, you'll start to get hamstrings. That's okay, that's good. But the glutes, we want to work first. So make sure you're getting a good glute squeeze before you lift the leg. It also helps keep your hip in a good position and not shoving forward in the hip socket. So if you feel just in front of your hip here, your place your fingertips, you can maybe feel if your hip is shoving forward in the socket into your fingertips as you lift. Then you might wanna see if you can focus on getting a more of a glute squeeze, isolate the glute and then lift and see if that changes anything. Okay, we're gonna do about 10 on each side here. This is a great one for retraining the glutes to work before the hamstrings. And we don't wanna lift the leg too high because then our low back is gonna kick in. Okay, so we want glutes and hamstrings here, glutes first, then hamstrings. Really retraining those glutes. You can do all the glute exercises in the world, but if you're not truly using them, then you're not gonna be able to build strength. So that's why this exercise and all the exercises in the circuit are meant to um, retrain and activate those glutes so that we can strengthen them properly. So once you get about 10 there, we're gonna come up and you're gonna lie onto your side close to a wall. Okay, so you can lie down on my right side here. My right leg is straight, left leg's on the top, and it is bent. My trunk is all in line here. You are pushing into the wall with this top leg, okay? Pushing into the wall, activating and squeezing your glute. You're gonna ramp up, we're gonna hold for 10 seconds. You're gonna start with a gentle force, progressing to more force, okay? So about 10 seconds. So I'm gently pushing into the wall, and then I'm starting to use more force, more force, more force. Really feel that glute fire up. It should really, really be working here. And rest. And we're gonna do that again. Start with gentle force, gentle, gentle, gentle. Start ramping up, more force. So you're really pushing into that wall. And hold again, this will be about 10 seconds as you ramp up your force and then relax. And we'll do one more here. Really pushing into that wall. And relax. That is called GNS hip extension. We're gonna do the other side as well. So this is great because it, it activates your glutes, keeping your hip in neutral here, okay? So we're not um, moving through emotion, we're isometrically contracting the glutes. So again, top knee is bent, you're pushing into the wall, ramp up that force, starting gentle, gentle, gentle. Hold. Repeat, start gentle, 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 ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, hold, hold, hold. Really feel that glute fire up and relax. And we're gonna do one more here, okay? And again, you can only tolerate gentle pressure or gentle force into the wall, then that's all you need to do. Start there and then you can work on building up more force. So we do about three reps on each side there and then we're gonna stand up you're gonna grab your broom or baseball bat, cane, whatever you have. We're gonna work on our hip hinge here. So your broom is in contact with the back of your head, your upper, mid back, and my sacrum tailbone. Those three points, it needs to stay in contact with those three points the whole time, okay? So I've got one hand on the top, one hand on the bottom, all three points in contact. Slight bend in my knee, feet about hip width apart, hinging back from my hips, and then I'm coming up. Again, keeping all three points in contact with the broom, okay? Inhale down, exhale up. Do about 10 to 12 reps here. Again, keeping a neutral spine. If you feel the broom moving away from your, from one of those three points, kind of check in with your form, make sure you're keeping everything in line and keeping all three of those points touching the broom as you hip hinge. This helps you maintain proper form, okay? And then you can also, if that becomes easy after you've worked on this a few times, you can always progress to single leg. Same idea here, all three points in contact the whole time. You're just going to one leg, working a little bit more balance here. 
Make sure to control that knee and foot and ankle. Okay, so once you have about 10 to 12 reps there, we've got one more. I'm gonna hold on to this. Hold on to your countertop or something sturdy, a pole in your basement or a banister. We are going to do squats. Inhale, sit back, feel the glutes lengthen. Exhale, come up. Inhale, sit back, exhale, come up. So don't tighten those glutes the whole time. We want them to lengthen as we sit back, okay? Keep a neutral spine, not arched or tucked. Sit back and let those glutes lengthen and then contract as you come up. That's why it helps to hold on to something because you can really let those glutes lengthen as you sit back while you hold on to something. And just hold on lightly, don't hold on for dear life. Just hold on lightly to allow you to sit back and feel those glutes lengthen and then tighten on the way up. Inhale down, exhale up. Once you have about 10 here, I'm gonna do one more and then we are done. So that is your glute circuit, six exercises ideally. Um, I have you go through that um, for two to three rounds total. So if you have the time, press replay and repeat that circuit. Um, try to do two to three rounds and, or you could do this on your own. Again, I have the individual videos for you to check